The Lord be with you. Welcome to church again today. Today is our service of remembering. It's our Remembrance Sunday. We begin with a few words of scripture. What does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. So today we, we are here to remember to remember with thanks those who have given their lives in the service of others. To remember with sadness the suffering, the destruction and pain caused by human conflict. But we're also here today to commit ourselves to be peacemakers and to be peacekeepers wherever we can. This week in the, in the church, the school will have been coming in every morning in their, in their little pods and doing some activities around remembering, um, around the, the saints and I know people have been coming in during the week to the gathering grounds to write some names on the saint wall. We're going to go and join Brian and Lynn. They're going to show us a little bit about what they've been doing. Good morning St Lynn. Good morning St Brian. Good morning everyone. Well we are in the Gathering Grounds but we had such a busy week. We had a fantastic week where we welcomed all the children over from the school in their pods and we learnt lots of things. Oh yes we did. We talked about so much. We talked about saints didn't we? And heroes and who can name the most superheroes and we even had groups that were looking for my little Spider-Man figurine as well didn't we? We did, and then we had a chance to look at the stained glass windows, and we looked at two in particular, and we found two saints in those. Brian, can you remember? Hmm, yeah, there, there was St. Paul, wasn't there? And then there was also St. John. But Lynn, we also saw other saints. Actually, across the week, we saw over 200 saints come through the doors of the church. We did, and St. Paul in the Bible, he says that anyone who tries to do the right thing is a saint. Mm, yeah, did you talk about a saint? I talked about my dad because he really showed me um, how to live a good life um, by um, the type of person he was. He was very kind and caring, lots of other things I told you as well about him. Mm, yeah, and um, with my group I talked about my friend Karen, who was a very godly woman and she always encouraged me to be more faithful with God in my walk with God. Uh, as I'm talking about the group I was with, I was with fifth and sixth class to kickstart the week. Um, we got the opportunity to write letters to our heroes um, that were still here with us. Uh, it was great fun watching them actually sit down and think through who are the important people in their lives and then get them to write letters to them. And junior infants and senior infants, they made little lights for their saints and junior infants decorated little plastic pots with a little tea light inside and senior infants made these ones out of CDs. And then first and second class, they did these. These are more lamp type, uh, but it was the exact same thing as what junior and senior infants did. So well done. And we ended off the week with third and fourth class who made poppies to remember. And uh, they made, did, did a really good job on them. And somebody even said they were going to send it to their grandma because that's who they were remembering and who they miss right now. And talking of poppies, I'm going to hand over to Rob because he's got some thoughts around that he's going to share with us. Rob, over to you. So I'm standing here today in front of this lovely display and I have Anne Burnett and Heather Nealance to, to thank for the work they did putting the display together. And you will see at this time of year people wearing little poppies like this. And I've got a, a really lovely little bunch of them here. And, and you might ask, what are they for? Or, or why do we wear them? So we take an opportunity this Sunday in November to do two things. One is to remember those who have died in, in wars. But the second thing that we do is we take the opportunity to pray for peace and to commit ourselves to peaceful living. And we wear this poppy as a reminder of that. And the red petals, which you can see on the outside, they are a reminder of blood that was spilt and is spilled in wars. 
Sometimes when we are young in the playground, we, we play at war, we play battles, we pretend to shoot each other, and, and it feels like fun. But really, we know that there is nothing fun about war. We know that war is a terrible thing. We also remember that this is the flower. And the poppies that grew on the battlefields after the First World War were a sign of life. They remind us that there's always hope and there's always life and the future is full of potential. War is a painful thing and it's a hurtful thing, but it's not the picture that God has for the world. The Bible tells us that God's picture of the world is a place under the rule of God where there is no more sadness, no more war, no more pain, and no more suffering. God's vision of the world is a place of peace. So here's what I want to do as we start today. I'm going to give you a few questions. And perhaps if you're watching this as a family and there are children watching, what I would love you to do is after the the service is over, maybe have a conversation around a few of these questions. If you're watching it on your own, maybe just take the chance to reflect on these questions today. Here they are. What do you think peace feels like? What does peace look like? How can we help to bring peace to the world today? Let's pray together. We pray for all who are angry. Bring them peace. We pray for all who are jealous. Bring them peace. We pray for all who are greedy. Bring them peace. We pray for all who hate. Bring them peace. And we pray for all who are afraid. Bring them peace. Amen. Let's confess our sins to God. Let's confess the sins and shortcomings of the world. Let's confess its pride and its greed. And let's confess its evil divisions and its hatreds. And let's confess our share in what is wrong and, and, and our feelings to seek and to establish that peace which God wills for all of his children. And so we say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what has been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confer and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let me pray the collect. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority, and bring the families of the nation, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule. He was alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Heather and Liam who are going to read our lesson today and then after that we'll go straight over to Alistair. A reading from Matthew 5 beginning at the first verse. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and he taught them saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure and harsh, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. May your word today be a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path. In the name of Jesus. Amen. When I was about 20 years old, Dar Straits released a song and an album called Brothers in Arms. The second verse says, through these fields of destruction, baptisms of fire, I've witnessed your suffering as the battle raged higher. And though they did hurt me so bad in the fear and alarm, you did not desert me, my brothers in arms. Brothers in arms, of course, are those who stand shoulder to shoulder with each other, armed to protect or to fight for their nation. Over a hundred years ago, 25 brave souls from this parish enlisted to fight in World War I, also known as the Great War. Now, 25 does not seem like a big number, but the total number of people of our faith tradition in the Glencullen Kilternan area from the 1911 census only numbered 225. An interesting aside is that if you uh, get a percentage of 25 as a percentage of 225, you come up with the percentage 11, 11, 11. I think that's amazing. The total population of the, the electoral area, which kind of mirrors the parish area, was only 1,750 people. So, 220, sorry, 25 people was a big number of, of people, and that was just from, from this parish alone. Of course, the population today stands at about 20,000. So if we were to apply the same percentage, that would be 2,225 people going to fight. That is a huge number. Almost all the boys and young men of this parish in that late teen age group from this parish went to fight in this war. And some of them actually were brothers in arms. If we look up here, we've got three boys, Arthur, Ken and Niall, Omura. They were the three eldest sons of the rector of this parish, Thomas Omura. He served as rector from 1894 to 1922. And his three eldest sons, three brothers, went to fight in the war. And then we've got two sets of Tracys. We've got George, Edward and Robert, and then George Ernest and William. So, of course, the Amwaras lived here in the Glebe, Tracy's from Bally Edmund Duff, and the other Tracy's from Barnaquilla, brothers in arms. And these boys would have been as young as 15 and as up to 22 years old. It's really hard, 100 years on, for us to imagine that young men that young were going to fight in a war. We remember them today and we remember the sacrifice that they made. Moving on, there are two phrases that I keep hearing over the last eight months, reminiscent of the war years. First one is, hopefully it will all be over by Christmas and this too will pass. I'm sure it will be over by Christmas, the current unpleasantness. However, I'm not really sure which one. That phrase, this too will pass, Many people have asked me, Al, is this from the Bible? It sounds like it should be, but it's not. It's actually from a Persian fable and was used famously in a speech by Abraham Lincoln. However, the Bible does rep repeatedly use the phrase, this too, as in Ecclesiastes, this too is meaningless and will pass as in Jesus' words 
in the Synoptic Gospels of the Signs of End Times. He says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. And so it is to Jesus' words from Matthew 5 that we now turn our attention. Jesus' words that we have heard today are, of course, the Beatitudes, the opening verses from the Sermon on the Mount, the most famous sermon ever made. Jesus is standing on the foothills outside of Capernaum. Gathered around him are the disciples and the crowd to hear him deliver this sermon. And the sermon, the Beatitudes, are really a kind of code of ethics. They start by describing what, what happens and what we experience on earth that is temporary and what the reward or the consequence will be in the eternal life. And it speaks to the victims of war because it talks of the poor of spirit, those who mourn, the meek, people hungering and thirsting for righteousness, being merciful, pure of heart, being peacemakers and being persecuted for righteousness. We must never glorify war, but we must never forget the brave souls who died for our freedom. Jesus, of course, didn't encourage war. He encouraged passive resistance, non-violent resistance. And of course, the com our commandments say, God's commandments say, thou shalt not kill. But these co countercultural code of ethics, Jesus introduced this concept of of turning things upside down. Therefore, the poor spirit, they will inherit the kingdom of heaven. And we follow on from that, that as disciples of Christ, what sh we should do is counter to the culture that we exist in. Where people take, we should give. Where people hate, we love. And where people abuse, we help. We're called by Jesus to be peacemakers, courageous in adversity, we are called to fight by Jesus, but that is to struggle to overcome or to eliminate or prevent all forms of injustice. We are to pursue social justice, what is right and what is fair. And that means pursuing peace, respect for other people, fair treatment of everyone and exhibiting just behaviour. And so we finish out here in the graveyard of Kilternan Parish Church. There are many graves here that are the graves of men and women who fought in the wars. Of course, the headstone doesn't tell us the story of the brave acts or the work that they did in that time. But they have now gone to their eternal rest. And so we turn to the final words of the Beatitudes, where Jesus says, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. And may the brave souls who fought for our peace May their reward be great in heaven. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see our God. The secret of the Lord is that their soul is Christ's abode. We're going to affirm our faith together as together we say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so we have our act of remembering, and as part of our act of remembering, we have a time of, of silence. So let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war and in the cause of world peace, those whom we knew and those whose memory we treasure, and that all and for all who have died in the service of humankind. And so before our time of silence, we, we say together, they shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. So let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and to the service of our fellow human beings. Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of need and suffering, and for the praise of your holy name. Guide us by your Spirit. Give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. So we have some prayers from across the community. We're going to pass over to them now. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict, and ask that God may give us peace. For the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God, may God give peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss, may God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends and all who pray for their safe return, may God give peace. For civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. May God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, may God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace, may God give peace. O oh God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memories we cherish and those whose names we shall never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future. For you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. So as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we commit ourselves to responsible living and to faithful service. Let me ask you if you're willing to respond with we will. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? We will. Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? We will. Will you work for a just future for all humanity? We will. Merciful God, we offer to you the fears in us that have not yet been cast out by love. May we accept the hope you have placed in the hearts of all people and live lives of justice and courage and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer. Amen. So thanks to everyone who was involved in our service today as we remembered and we committed ourselves to peace and to justice. We leave with the words of God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you, remain with you and those who you love, this day and always. Amen.